Well, the Munich hostage crisis, the Granville train disaster, Lindy Chamberlain's murder inquest, Australian photojournalist Russell McFedrin was behind the lens for all of them, capturing some of the most defining images in history. The lauded photographer died on Monday at the age of 82 from heart failure. I spoke to his former colleague and long-time friend, Mike Bowers, on the life and legacy of the iconic snapper. Mike, Russell McFedrin had quite a profound impact on your career early on. Just tell us about that. Well, I ran across him during a papal visit in the 80s and uh, I was, um, as you did in those days, you started in dark rooms, so I was printing his material that he was shooting for it. And uh, he kind of took a bit of a shine to me, I think, and, and took an interest in, in my career from that point on. And he, he was a professional uh, in every sense of the word and he kind of set a template if you were a photographer in the second half of the 20th century Russell McFedrin's career set a template that was pretty much the perfect press photography photojournalism template working in Sydney Hong Kong London and at some of the biggest events in the world and his portfolio is one of those portfolios that you look at and you say I wish I took that. Let's look through some of his amazing pictures over his career starting with the Buckingham store fire um, shot that was a significant one for him. Yes it was he, he says uh, he credits the Buckingham department store in Oxford Street picture where the walls started to fall as turbocharging and supercharging his career because what that did was it gave him the ability to pick and choose um, big sporting events and big world events and to go and cover them and that's how he ended up in some of the places where he took his even more famous pictures. So the, the, that particular shot was done on Anzac Day and um, as happened in those days the picture editor actually rang the pub where they were having a pre-March Anzac Day March drink with the other photographers and uh, he drew the short straw and ended up in Oxford Street and he was uh, with another photographer called Barry Ward who uh, was shooting with a medium format camera and unfortunately Barry chose that particular moment to change films and missed the wall coming down and uh, and Russ had a 35 millimeter camera which were quite new to the industry in those days and he just reloaded so he managed to get a number of shots off uh, as it came down and um, we're left with that very iconic picture and uh, his colleague unfortunately missed it and uh, so there is an element of luck in press photography that Russ would always say you know You've got to turn up and be there. F8 and be there is a saying. And, um, and, and the more you're there, the more luck you make for yourself, I mm. suppose. Another incredibly iconic image was the one from the Munich Olympics in 1972. I'm not sure the words to describe this photo. It's chilling, it's confronting. What is it about this picture that makes it so iconic? Well, I think its simplicity is something that stares out at you. There's the menacing hooded figure with the curved shape uh, and it's in stark contrast to the sort of sharp lines of the athlete's building. And it came to represent an era, and I would say arguably, Joe, that this is the most famous news picture ever taken by an Australian, um, because it will transport you instantly back to that era in 72, which changed big sporting events and big events generally um, forever, really, because suddenly um, security had to be upgraded for everything. And uh, we're still uh, kind of in the shadow of, of, of that particular event. He was also there at the Granville train disaster, taking shots of the aftermath. This particular shot just shows the precarious situation that yeah. those people were in. Um, he had quite a knack of finding the, the right place to be and, and getting right down in amongst it. Um, we probably wouldn't be allowed access like this nowadays um, because I can imagine there was still quite a lot of danger around with the debris that lay about. and. Um, he said that, that, he told me that that was one of the most terrific jobs uh, that he went to because uh, it was very graphic. Not an easy thing to do with so much happening around you. You've got to be able to focus in on the job at hand and, and, and Russ had the ability to sort of, uh, I guess, block out the, the, the things that were going on around him and just look through the lens. Mm. This next one's quite a candid one of Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip at the closing ceremony of the 1982 Commonwealth Games. It's just a moment in time here. Yes, it is. And look, Russell went to London and worked for Fleet Street um, in the in the 60s. Uh, then Fleet Street was seen as the Valhalla of uh, press photography. Uh, everyone wanted to go there. It wasn't easy to get a job. So he used to follow Prince Philip a lot. And one of his big breaks happened when he was at a polo match and heard that Princess Margaret was water skiing nearby. And he went down there and um, um, 
the Daily Express photographer turned up. Now, Russ had a camera at the time that was a very short lens camera, and you would have needed a big telephoto one. So he had some pictures of Princess Margaret water skiing, but they weren't very good. And the Daily Express photographer was quite shocked to see him. They said, who are you? He said, I'm Russ. And he said, well, what are you doing here? This was my exclusive. Anyway, they came to a deal. Um, Russ would get a tryout on the Daily Mail if he, uh, if he destroyed his neg so that the Daily Mail could retain its exclusive on Princess Margaret. So that's what got him into Fleet Street. Um, um, and so he was quite used to following the royals. And, uh, and he's, he's just captured beautifully, just a beautiful candid moment. Because if you watch this on, on film as it was in those days, it would have just been there for just a fleeting second. And it's quite a skill to have with the old equipment they were using in the day. Now I chose this one to focus on because you just can't get any more Australian than this image. How was he? Of that was it right up. Paul Hogan we'd, on the Harbour Bridge. We'd, we'd need a barbecue and a prawn yes. and we'd be, we'd have the thing complete. But I mean look Hogues was a, a rigger, so I'm sure he was mm. quite at home, but I, I can see that Russ has probably asked him to climb over. The OH and S people would have a fit now, yeah. wouldn't they? And take your shirt and off. And take your well. shirt off as well. <laughs> yeah, there's probably no slip slop slap going on there. What would you say was the legacy of Russell, particularly in the photojournalism world? Well, I know about 15 or 20 people personally whose career he's had a personal influence on. So um, he's left us this wonderful collection of photographs, mm -hmm. but he's also left us a way of working, I think, in the modern era where you don't rely on being assigned to something. You think about the photos yourself. You think about what's coming up and, and, and that's his legacy, he's left us with a way of working um, so you, you can be as good as you want technically if you don't have that dogged tenaciousness to get yourself to a place where you're going to get a decent picture you might as well not know all the technical things and I think that's his legacy. That's Mike Bowers speaking with me about the amazing Russell McFedrin, or Russ, as he went by often. And he was talking about, there about the legacy that he left, not just with his amazing portfolio of these iconic images, but also the legacy he's passed on to other photographers about the way you should work.